and welcome to another video. Today I am super super excited and also a little bit nervous um, because today I'm going to be doing another 24 hour challenge but I'm going to be doing a 24 hour challenge where I read book recommendations all from Pedro Pascal who is one of my favorite actors and I feel like has just taken the internet by storm. I absolutely have loved him in The Last of Us and I'm a huge Mandalorian fan and so it's just like I needed to read his book recommendations. I needed it in my life. I needed more Pedro Pascal in my life. So I am super super excited to read these books and honestly Pedro Pascal has an incredible taste um, in book recommendations so I'm excited to share them with you, give them a shot, and hopefully do well in this 24-hour challenge. I'm again just a little nervous but it should be a really really fun time. So I chose four books from this 24-hour challenge from the list that um, Celebrity Book Rex, which is a fantastic Instagram, I highly recommend checking it out, um, has put together. Um, just because I cannot read every book recommendation that he has given um, in those 24 hours, I am not a fast enough reader, but I am excited about these four books that I have chosen. Um, so let's jump into my TBR. All right, so the first book on my list is definitely a certified classic and that is The Master and Margarita. This is like a dark comedy of sorts but it deals a lot with speaking on communism, the Soviet Union, what Krishna philosophy is. It deals with religion in some ways. I've heard incredible things about it and I'm really excited to give it a chance. I also just absolutely adore the cover. I think it's incredible and whimsical and interesting so I am very excited to try this um, and I've also been very interested in getting into more translated works. This is an excellent place for me to start this year in that journey so super super excited. The next book is also a classic and that is 100 Years of Solitude. Um, again I have been wanting to read this book for a really really long time. I've heard it's absolutely incredible and it to me, I feel like is like the founder of magical realism, that whole genre. So I am super excited to read this. Um, I just think it's going to be incredible. The next book I actually have not heard of before, before I read this list, and that is Franny and Zoe. Um, it's a very, very short book, which is partly why I chose it, but it also just sounds interesting. It's actually two stories in one book, and the first story deals with kind of like a college student, I think it's kind of coming of age, I'm not quite positive. And the second story is about Zoe and it deals more with like I think family drama. Again, I don't know that much about it but I'm really excited to read it and it'll be a nice break book from my larger novels in this list. The last book I got is on my Kindle and it's Birds of America. I was super drawn to this book because um, if you don't know, um, Mac, my husband, is really really into birding and I've kind of gotten into it as well, um, which drew me to the title. I know it's technically not about that, but I just was fascinated by the title because of that reason. It's a collection of stories, um, which I'm excited about and I think will be a good break in between, again, those other two classics. Um, so I'm very, very excited about it. It's also um, New York Times like best book of the year. It's really like highly acclaimed and so yeah I'm very excited um but the other books that are kind of in this list of book recommendations I will list below because he's read just incredible things he's read Jane Eyre which is just incredible I've already read but fantastic choice um he's also read Crime and Punishment and loved it um that is just way too long of a book for me to read during this 24-hour challenge but I've wanted to read Crime and Punishment for a very long time now so eventually I will get there but Pedro Pascal has just absolutely wonderful book recommendations and so I will list that full list down below. Um, but yeah, for y'all that have seen my videos before, I usually do my 24 hour challenges in the middle of the day. I usually start them like around 12 or 1. Um, but today I'm going to try starting um, at night um, and then go into tomorrow night. Um, it's little a little bit anxiety inducing to be changing it up but I wanted to try it for other future challenges if it works out for me um so I'm already starting 
a little bit tired, but I have definitely drank a lot of caffeine tonight. Um, if you couldn't tell by the intro of this video, um, but I'm excited to start and get going. Um, and I think the first book that I'm going to be starting with is actually The 100 Years of Solitude, just because I am very excited to read this and it's been on my TBR for a very long time. Um, and I always like to start with the bigger books first when I have some energy to do so. So um, I will start with this and we're gonna get going on my 24 hour challenge. Ah, crazy, <laughs> let's go. finish 100 Years of Solitude um, and <laughs> this is 100% a classic for a reason. I would rate it I think four out of five stars um, and I will let you know why and I also definitely want to already reread it for a multitude of different reasons. Um, but basically I found this just absolutely fascinating. Um, as basically the founder of magical realism, he does it perfectly, he writes it perfectly. It's a perfect mix of whimsical while also dealing with the most terrifying violence and um, topics just around that nature, especially dealing with colonialism. Um, and he just writes it beautifully. There's so many lines in this book that are just incredibly written and um, I was honestly astonished. It was amazing. However, <laughs> um, reading this in the middle of the night in a slightly delirious state, um, I would not recommend. <laughs> um, this book is very similar to a lot of magical realism where it's non-linear in its storytelling. It jumps around between character to character quite frequently and time to time quite frequently. Um, and in a way is almost kind of like a stream of consciousness not all the way but in that like jumping back and forth between different things when one thing connects um very much feels like a stream of consciousness and so while reading it there was times where i did get confused especially as like a fast reader i would miss something and have to reread a couple times to make sure i was fully understanding when and where I was at and who we were speaking about. Um, with that, there is a multitude of characters that are all named the same name. There's a reason for that. Most of the characters are named the same things because they're their father's names, but also it just brings to light the, again, like cyclical nature of the story. Um, it shows how history repeats itself constantly, how things are easily forgotten, um, even between family members, and how things are just, again, just so easily repeated. Um, which, you know, with colonialism was very much the case, especially in um, Latin American countries. And because I was reading this, you know, at 3, 4 a.m., um, some of those things would get lost and I'd have, I'd have to reread several times to fully comprehend what was going on, um, which is why right now this book is a four star read for me. I feel like a big part of that is because I read it <laughs> in a state that I probably shouldn't have been reading it. So I really do want to reread this book already and fully annotate it and just dive in and spend hours upon hours with this. Um, but giving it like a once through read to really fully understand the story was fantastic. The ending was super phenomenal and just again lent itself into that magical realism but also lent itself into the story itself. It was just just wow but 
Either way, um, I actually have already started reading the next book, which I thought would be an excellent break from the magical realism and world of 100 Years of Solitude, and that is Birds of America, um, because it is a short story anthology, short story collection. Um, I thought it'd be perfect and uh, give me enough of a break before I jump into any other books um, to make sure that, you know, um, I just have a fresher mind. So I am going to uh, continue reading that. I've loved it so far, just spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, so let's keep reading. I just finished reading The Birds of America um, and it was just incredible, fantastic. Um, I've actually already read some of the short stories before and I don't think I quite realized um, the author I was reading from until I recognized some of the short stories and I was like, oh, I know exactly who this is. Um, but it was just absolutely fantastic. I think it takes a lot of skill to make mundane things interesting and it also takes a lot of skill to basically put humanity down on paper. A lot of the short stories were extremely relatable. It was most of them were women kind of dealing with the ups and downs of life um, in a multitude of different ways. Lori Moore just has a fantastic way of writing. It's incredible. It's beautiful. Every single short story was incredible. I loved every one of them. I definitely feel like this is a five star read for me, which I was not expecting during this challenge, so I'm very, very excited about it. Um, and I usually do not rate short story anthologies five stars because oftentimes there's like one or two that don't hit right or aren't the best. All of these short stories were incredible. Every single one was fascinating, interesting, dealing with, again, just like humanity in itself. and. Uh, it's just like my favorite. I loved it. <laughs> I can't say enough about it. It's It was just perfect. Um, so highly recommend uh, giving this a read, especially if you um, want to get into short stories and want to get into that realm of literature and books. Um, highly recommend giving Birds of America a try. It was so good. <laughs> I just like want a physical copy now. Um, I don't know if you guys do that, but whenever I read something on my Kindle or I get a library book and I'm like, oh, now I need the book. Now I need to buy it and own it for myself. <laughs> um, but either way, I am going to move on to the next book, which is uh, another kind of short story anthology. It's the two short stories in one. Um, and that's Franny and Zoe. I am excited to read this, give it a shot, um, and then we'll move on to our final book. But I needed just another short one. I'm very much still trying to wake myself up. Um, so yeah. <laughs> has the best taste of books. <laughs> Every single book has been absolutely incredible and this one is no different. 
Um, I would rate this a four star, maybe just because there was like some scenes that I guess like drew on a little too long for me, but honestly it was just absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't think I originally realized that these aren't two separate short stories. There's a short story and a novella that kind of combine together into one long story, if that makes any sense. Um, but this was fantastic. It's all about, you know, uncovering passion and coming to terms with going all in on something and being great in something and not feeling bad about being great in something. Um, I loved just the conversation and discourse about um, Franny's acting career and what she was feeling. I thought it was just incredible and extremely relatable. I think a lot of people, especially if you're just like really good at something, it's super easy to feel that imposter syndrome and also just feel like you're not supposed to have this like ego, you're not so supposed to be this great person, you're not supposed to think about yourself in this like high and mighty way. Um, but if you're good at something, you're good at something, you know, <laughs> and you should do it and give it give it everything that you have and give it your all. I don't know. I thought this was incredible. I also absolutely loved the sibling relationship in this. It reminded me a lot of the relationship that I have with my siblings as the oldest <laughs> in a family of five. I feel like I've had these conversations before. Um, so yeah, just fantastic. It's short. It's a good read. I highly recommend checking it out if you have not. Um, and if you've read Catcher in the Rye, I'm sure you'll love this. Um, either way, yes, read this. It is great. <laughs> All right, so it is now officially time to move on to my last book of the challenge, and that is The Master and Margarita. Um, I am positive that I'm not gonna be able to finish this before the 24 hours is up. I've definitely taken my time with a lot of these books, which I think is totally fine, um, but I am gonna start it, um, and when I do finish it, later on i will give you guys a full review um but yeah let's get going on this book Technically, the end of my 24-hour reading challenge. It's officially 11 p.m. from the next day. I am very tired. Um, I got just about halfway through with the Master and Margarita, um, and I'm absolutely loving it so far. I think it's hilarious and has such like, a dark comedy, but also is really trying to say something with that dark comedy. I absolutely love the cast of characters. It's amazing so far um, and I definitely think I'm going to finish it tomorrow. So I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to see you guys tomorrow and kind of give the final review there about this book and also just about the challenge in general. Um, so I am going to go to sleep and see you guys tomorrow. Alright, I'm officially well rested and it is the next day um, and I also finished The Master and Margarita today um, and this was a five star read for me. It was absolutely fantastic. It was hilarious. I absolutely love reading about um, the devil and his entourage wreaking havoc and chaos in a town full of people who are just kind of greedy and don't really care about anyone but themselves. Um, I also just love that there is a giant cat making fun of people. Fantastic. Highly recommend reading that just for that bit. Um, but this book was just uh, incredible. It talks a lot about what it means to be an artist and what it means to truly be a creative and why you should create art um, and the purpose behind it. Um, I love the idea that being an artist is automatically being someone who rejects 
society in a lot of ways, um, especially with the setting of the Soviet Union and the author himself being the type of writer that wrote things that the Soviet Union was not happy to read. <laughs> um, I just thought it was beautiful. I also loved um, the difference between having courage and being fearful and um, how artists do have courage to say what they want and create things that they think are important um, and it's important to not be fearful and not walk away from something just because it's good um, or different. Um, so fantastic. I also loved the talk between good and evil and how you know, the devil and his entourage are not necessarily evil, they just bring out the evil in people. Um, so that was fantastic. Everything about this was so, so good. It was so well written. It was just a fun time. It was hilarious, which is a lot to say about a classic novel. I feel like either it is talking about a lot of important subjects or it's funny. This one was both and I loved it. I don't know. Highly recommend giving this a read. It's fantastic and it's also not a very difficult read which I was expecting so I'm glad that it wasn't that way um but yeah highly highly recommend reading this it's just amazing but that is officially the end of my 24 hour reading challenge um which is wild I highly recommend all of these books Pedro Pascal has wonderful taste <laughs> every single one was a four or a five star read for me and multiple I already want to reread again um, including the Master and Margarita, Franny and Zoe. Honestly all of them, all of them I want to reread. <laughs> um, but a lot of them just really stuck with me in ways that were extremely personal and I wasn't expecting to feel emotions in that way while reading these books. So it's just a great time. But talking about stats of the challenge, like I usually do, I ended up reading 1,100 pages during this challenge, um, which is about where I can get with these 24-hour challenges. I usually can do maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on the difficulty of the books to read. Um, so I was pretty proud of myself to read uh, um, 1,000 pages. I also read three and a half books. Um, of course, I can't quite count the entirety of The Master and Margarita because I didn't quite finish it in the 24-hour time slot. Um, but I think that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> Just got me reading, which is the most important thing. If you want to see any more of my 24-hour challenges, I'll have them linked in this video um, or down below because um, I do end up doing these a lot. I don't really know why I end up torturing myself in this way, <laughs> but it's fun, weirdly, so <laughs> there's that. Um, but yeah, that is the end of today's video. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.